the third peace forum on the heavenly unified Korea, hosted by international headquarters and Korea UPF subregion 4, was held with a focus on the topic, a vision for maritime peace, the Se Mangum land reclamation project. In his welcoming speech, Heavenly Unified Korea Office Director Om Yoon Hyung said that the solution for humankind's food and energy problems lies in the sea and that the future of Korea can be secured through sound maritime policy. UPF Korea co-chair Lee Sang-jae said that in this era of conflicts over energy and food security, the global movement for maritime peace being cultivated in the Cheju and Honam region is a crucial work for future civilization. Professor Emeritus Lee Wu Bom of the Chonan National University emphasized the value of the ocean and spoke about the maritime business being developed in Yosu, while former Semangum project head Yang Chung Mo explained that the project is emerging as a central industrial hub for green energy, eco-friendly high-tech agriculture and a new global industry. During the discussions that followed, broad views on peace and the ocean were exchanged and proposals were made regarding the maritime industry as a new growth engine and a vision for future peace. Heavenly Korea Subregion 5 held a home church conference and Hundok Divine Principal Lecture Contest. The Hundok Divine Principal Lecture Contest was held to develop lecturing skills for witnessing and to help build healthier church communities and to support members in accomplishing the mission to gather 43 committed families. The home church conference that followed sought to promote healthy church growth through the establishment of house churches, with 250 people attending, including pastors and other church-related leaders, and active blessed families, its purpose was to spread home church culture through succeeding in bringing new members, and thus being victorious in the ongoing second 40-day condition, and also restoring the local community and bringing victory in Vision 2027 on the foundation of the home churches and Chonbo family churches. The Chonbo Education Center recently concluded its Chonbo Leadership School course, which has been conducted over the past year. Beginning from June 21st of last year, a total of 57 classes have been held, with church leaders and members from 70 countries participating, and interpretation into 10 languages. Thousands have participated in the classes, with 90,000 views on YouTube. Some 3,000 people received graduation certificates for completing the entire program, which taught church growth and instilled members with leadership skills. The program is aligned with International Headquarters' strategy and is presently the only educational program conducted each month for family members around the world. It has given many members hope for the future. In Heavenly Africa, 180 blessed members and new family members in Benin participated online in the Hyojong Chonbo Great Works held in Korea. Holy candles were passed out to the blessed families who attended the event and they expressed their gratitude for the grace of Heavenly Parent and True Parents. The Heavenly Africa Family Department held an online Hundoke and Blessing Candidate workshop to help people prepare for the blessing. During the workshop, the family department directors from each subregion gave guidance on preparing for the blessing and witnessing, and the witnessing and education director shared a moving testimony from a second-generation member from the Republic of the Congo. Those attending promised to do their best to enable many second-generation members from Heavenly Africa to attend the blessing in 2023. In South America, the Columbia Family Federation held a seven-day Divine Principle workshop for youth members and new witnessing contexts on the theme, A New Concept for a New Lifestyle. The 20 participants were very attentive and were particularly inspired by the final day's preparations about true parents' lives and work. 
The participants developed close bonds with each other during the workshop and pledged to invest in their activities when they returned to their regions. UPF Canada held a Peace Ambassador Awards ceremony with 300 local dignitaries in attendance. Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau sent an official congratulatory letter and Ontario Governor Doug Ford sent a congratulatory video message. At the ceremony, awards were presented to Agnes Miranda, Chairman of the Philippine Independence Day Council, to Phi Min Noon, a dedicated woman from Cambodia who donated her assets to care for orphans and children in Cambodia, and to the Honorable Jean Augustine, an immigrant from Granada, Central America, who began her life in Canada as a maintenance worker and later became Canada's first black female parliamentarian and continues to do extensive volunteer work throughout her career as a lawmaker. In addition, 40 leaders from local organizations were installed as new peace ambassadors. The Heavenly USA Women's Federation for World Peace held a 30th anniversary celebration and conference with the theme Radiate, honoring the past, celebrating the present, and building the future. During the event, held on an interactive online platform with 342 people in attendance, Women's Federation Senior Vice President Sun Jin Moon delivered welcoming remarks and congratulations were given by former Women's Federation Presidents Nora Spurgeon and Alexa Ward. The conference featured a panel discussion by young women leaders on how women can influence the world and there were beautiful musical performances. Benin UPF held a regional peace summit under the theme of the role of peaceful communities and families based on interdependence, mutual prosperity and universal values. The event was attended by 370 people, both on-site and online, including lawmakers, mayors, local government leaders, tribal chiefs and religious leaders, and included peace messages, the appointment of peace ambassadors, a peace blessing ceremony and the signing of a peace declaration. Reports of the event on national and local broadcasts and in print media brought it to the attention of the public. 370 athletes and judges from 26 countries participated in the Heavenly Korea 2022 online World Martial Arts Mastership event. Broadcast on WMC-TV, Tongil Mudo director Song Hee Chol of the World Peace Martial Arts Federation, who served as the narrator, introduced True Parents as the founders of Tongil Mudo. The competition was conducted with a scoring system for online match videos. Martial artists demonstrated wonderful technique in a total of six matches. In addition, the 7th WMC General Assembly was held under the theme of Harmony of Global Martial Arts, and there was discussion of cooperation among various international organizations on realizing the dream of uniting the world through martial arts. In heavenly Africa, diplomats from the Korea Embassy in Angola visited the Family Federation to discuss cooperating to hold a celebration of the 30th anniversary of diplomatic ties between Angola and the Republic of Korea. The Family Federation president presented them with a copy of True Father's autobiography as a testimony to True Parents' work for peace. UPF in Côte d'Ivoire hosted the 13th Regional Peace Summit under the theme of Peace, Interdependence and Regional Development. Some 300 people participated, including the Minister of Health, the Mayor of Segela, plus other politicians and religious leaders. A variety of programs, including a town hall meeting, lectures for young people, a multicultural family festival, Peace Ambassador Awards and appointments and a peace declaration signing attracted great interest from local residents. The Women's Federation and the Youth and Students for Peace in Austria co-hosted a conference aligned with the UN Convention to promote best practices for promoting healthy and sustainable lifestyles for young people. 
the Costa Rica ambassador to Austria emphasized the importance of a society that empowers families, and officials from the Austrian Chamber of Agriculture introduced a special green project. To conclude the event, the Vice President of Heavenly Europe YSP delivered a passionate speech promoting the core values of responsibility, integrity, service and empathy, and the Secretary General of the United Nations Women's Union thanked all the attendees. In Poland, our Ukrainian women members, who are temporarily residing in Poland due to the war, held meetings in three cities in conjunction with the Women's Federation in Poland and the Women's Federation in Japan in order to organize support for Ukrainian refugees and soldiers. Our publishing house in Germany, Kando Verlag, took part in the world's largest annual book fair in Frankfurt am Main in Germany. It was a chance to showcase True Parents' peace-orientated projects and, of course, to promote their autobiographies. UPF Germany held a discussion panel on the Forgive, Love, Unite approach to conflict solution, which attracted considerable attention. The Women's Federation held its 13th International Cultural Festival for Sustainable World Peace in Brazil, a country known for accommodating and accepting immigrants from all over the world. WFWP has been hosting the festival since 2005 to help overcome cultural, racial and religious prejudices by sharing traditional clothing, dance, food and music from various countries. With the cooperation of the Peace Ambassadors, the festival was held on the Libertagi Multicultural Street with the support of the Sao Paulo City Hall and some 18,000 people from 14 countries including diplomats, city hall officials and peace ambassadors took part. UPF Brazil held an event to mark the 200th anniversary of Brazil's independence. It was attended by 450 people, including Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro, Congresswoman Carla Zambelli, 40 peace ambassadors and state legislators. This was a valuable occasion at which to establish a cooperative relationship with Able-type leaders. Providential organizations in Paraguay, Heavenly South America, held a Peace Road event under the theme Pink October for the prevention of breast cancer. Seventy peace ambassadors, including former First Lady Emilia Franco, and 70 key figures attended the event, some giving keynote speeches. The event ended with everyone singing, Our cherished hopes are for unity. In Heavenly Korea Subregion 4, in memory of CARP leader Park Hee Jung, who passed away in 1993, and in order for the young generation to inherit his spirit of unity, the Honam Jeju Future Generation Peace Cup was held with more than 200 people attending. It was a gracious time to play and sweat together through games such as futsal, basketball, dodgeball and relay races and feel the warmth of fraternal love. In Heavenly Korea, a festival was held to commemorate the 34th anniversary of the 1988 blessing of 6,500 couples. Participating couples celebrated in a festive atmosphere with choral music and a magic show there was time to catch up with other couples whom they had not seen for a long time. Heavenly USA has launched an exciting new podcast called Why I Joined, shifting the online narrative about unificationists to a purely positive one. The podcast is releasing one new episode every Thursday, with 10 episodes in total for its first season. The podcast features first and second generation unificationists and their personal stories about why they joined the church and why they stay in the church. The podcast can be found on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts and Amazon Music. In Heavenly Europe, Family Federation members in Germany gathered to bid farewell to Dr. Dieter and Anna Schmidt as German national presidents and to welcome their successors Christian and Glenis Klaus. 
In their touching testimony, the Schmitz expressed gratitude to the many people that had accompanied them along the way. Members welcomed the new presidents and Heavenly Europe Regional President Dr. Michael Balcom congratulated the German Family Federation on its new beginning. In Taiwan, after conducting nationwide joint youth services that included Songhua Middle and High School students, each church hosted a purity consecration ceremony. In the presence of the Holy Spirit, many parents and children made a deeper emotional bond as the young people put on their purity rings in the holy atmosphere. The Family Federation in Taiwan vowed to do its best to repay the love and expectations of our Heavenly Parent by guiding both parents and precious second-generation sons and daughters to receive the blessing in the future. The Family Federation in Korea held a Songhwa ceremony for 36 couple Mrs. Che Gum Sun, wife of Tiger Park and National Messiah to Pakistan. Mrs. Che ascended at the age of 85 on October 22nd. True parents presented a tribute to congratulate Mrs. Che for her long life of service and prayed for her smooth transition to the eternal heavenly realm. Mrs. Che had entered the Chuncheon Women's High School in 1956 and was a member of the first Songhua Pioneer Witnessing Team in Chungnam Province. She was blessed with missionary Pak jong Tiger Park, in the 36 couple's blessing. Together they had nine children and later received a model family award. Even after Tiger Park ascended due to cancer in 1982, his wife led an exemplary life to raise her children and became national messiah to Pakistan. Including accompanying true parents on grueling fishing conditions, Mrs. Che devoted her life in the service of God and true parents. <laughs>